Chapter 3 Splice on Connectors We continue on our journey of the investigation of connectors, touching on the pros and cons of four field connectorization techniques. Epoxy and polish, quick term connectors like the bobtail, fusion splicing a pigtail, which is a connector on a short cable, and lastly the splice on connector, or SOC. Because the SOC is dominating the field install market, we choose to go into detail. Our field install comparison is done by John Bruno in a 5 minute video discussion. Hello again, John Bruno from Fiber Instrument Sales. Want to talk about the choices that we have when we do connectorization in the field. Now understand this, we really, with all the companies out there and all the types of connectors, there's really only three possible methods to install a connector. Now, all connectors are manufactured the same way when we talk about them in the manufacturing facility. But we're talking about in the field, how can we install our connectors? And again, only real three real possibilities. And one is really kind of leading the way and becoming the de facto standard. So let's talk about our histories and our different options. So the first one that we're going to talk about is your traditional polishing and doing the hand connectorization. So hand tools are required. We have to have uh, polishing pucks and jigs or we're going to use polish machines. So advantages and disadvantages. Advantages are going to be uh, the polish connection directly connected, no extra attenuation. We can achieve using the machines so very low optical return loss connections with APC and UPC end face geometries. But really for all practicality, the price of the equipment and the labor that it takes, this is really nothing that we really want to do anymore in the field. So what's the next option? The next option we have would be using a mechanical splice connection or what they like to call as quick term connectors. Quick term connector has already been polished by the manufacturer, low reflection qualities on the ferrule, but what happens is inside the connection there's a fiber stub and that stub is cleaved perfectly 90 degrees. So we take our field fiber that's being installed, we're going to cleave that to 90 degrees insert to the back of the connector, we have a butt splice and then some camming type of motion or cl clamping motion to hold that fiber in place. So again, advantages and disadvantages. Advantage, quick termination, very fast. Disadvantages, we tend to have more disadvantages than advantages here. Some of the disadvantages would be where those connectors come together, we have an index matching gel. Now we do get some extra attenuation there and we do add to our back reflections. Uh, and again, we know back reflections are not a great thing. The other thing is, yes, we've reduced labor costs, but these connectors tend to be fairly expensive, and we also have to have a kit that can cost up to two or three thousand dollars to install these connectors. These really dominated uh, the the installation world uh, for quite a long time until the popularity arose of our third installation procedure in the field, and that would be fusion splicing, and. So traditionally what we've done is, again, we'll take that, that factory manufactured connection and basically what you're getting is basically half of a, of a patch cord. It's a connection with the low reflective properties that we're requiring for the bandwidth needs of today. And basically we're not even doing the connector, we're just cleaving that fiber and we're fusion splicing that pigtail right to that field fiber. So advantages here, inexpensive. You know, our, um, our pigtails tend to be fairly inexpensive. The, the great thing about the pigtail is there's no additional reflections added in that fusion splice as compared to the mechanical where we do get those reflections. So again, we're getting a higher quality and really when it comes down to the prices, uh, it's the cheapest and highest quality way to do it. One of the disadvantages I can understand is when we splice that pigtail, we have a splice sleeve three feet, four feet down the line, and we have to manage that splice sleeve. We have to put them in trays, and we have to have extra room in our racks, you know, and that real estate is valuable. valuable. We don't really want to uh, occupy more space than needed. So from that really came our best option, and that's what we call a splice on connector, an SOC. There's many out there. Fiber instrument sales makes a great one, a cheetah connector, or for three mil an armadillo. And really, essentially, all that is is a pigtail that's been shortened down. So instead of feet, it's millimeters. So we have a field and field manufactured low reflection connector. 
But that splice is right at the back of that connection. And now when we fuse and splice that, again, no reflections from that splice, very low attenuation. When we shrink the sleeve, it's at the base of the connector. We pull the boot up, it covers the sleeve, no need for fusion splice trays, no need for larger boxes, no need for that uh, cable management. So really what we're seeing is uh, an explosion of these sales and people are realizing there's no higher quality way to install a fiber and no quicker or less expensive way. So that's kind of the nutshell. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a holler here at FIS. First, let's look at the steps required to install an SOC, or splice-on connector, on a 900 micron diameter tight buffered cable, commonly used in network closets or data centers. This 3.5 minute video uses a Fitel Fusion Splicer, but you can find the FIS, AFL and Sumitomo equivalent videos on our website. In this video, you will see the termination process for the FIS Cheetah Connector on 900 micron fiber. Here are the items necessary for installation. Fusion splicing machine. High precision cleaver. Optional heat shrink oven. Fiber stripper and scissors. Cleaning solution. And the FIS Cheetah Connector. Begin by sliding the 900 micron boot and splice protection sleeve onto the field fiber. Next, strip an inch to an inch and a half of the 900 micron jacket from the end of the field fiber. Be sure to remove all of the acrylate coating from the fiber. Wipe the fiber clean with cleaning solution before cleaving. Place the field fiber in the splicer's removable 900 micron holder. Be sure to place the buffer to the end of the holder to ensure the proper cleave length of 10 millimeter. Cleave the fiber. And place on the left side of the machine. Take the FIS Cheetah SOC. Remove the cleave protector and ferrule cap. Place the connector into the FIS Cheetah SOC holder. Place the connector holder on the right side of the splicing machine. The setup should look as shown before performing the splice. Close splicer lid and splice fibers together. Remove clamp on fiber holder and bring splice sleeve up. Lift the field fiber and allow the splice sleeve to slide to the connector, pushing the sleeve to position as needed. Before shrinking, the sleeve should sit as shown. Set the connector holder onto the heat shrink oven and set connector and splice sleeve as shown. Start the heat cycle on the oven and the start button will begin to blink. When the light begins to blink faster, the cooling cycle has started. If additional heating time is needed, you can press the start button again to initiate a reheat cycle of 15 seconds. Once the sleeve is shrunk, remove the connector and allow the splice to cool. Slide the 900 micron boot flush up to the back of the connector. For SC style connectors, Snap on the outer housing, making sure the keyway is on top when installing. You have now completed the FIS Cheetah Splice-On Connector. Our next 6 minute video shows the installation of the Splice-On Connector on a 3 mm diameter fiber cable using an AFL splicer. The crimping of the sleeve to the cable and Kevlar provides extra desired pull strength. The techniques of stripping and cleaving are critical skills technicians should learn. 
In this video, you will see the termination process using Fiber Instrument Sales' Armadillo 3mm Splice-On Connector using the Fujikura 62S Core Alignment Fusion Splicer. Here are the items needed. Fujikura CT30 Cleaver, FIS Universal SOC Oven, SOC Holder, 3mm Cordage Holder, Crimp Tool, Kevlar Shears and Tri-Hole Stripper, Cleaning Solution and Wipes, Screwdriver. Before any splicing, an important practice is to calibrate the fusion splicer. This is called an arc calibration. On the 62S, press the menu key, scroll over to window number 5, and select arc calibration. Prepare and load left and right fibers into splicer. This must be done using single mode cable. When fibers are loaded, close the lid and begin the arc calibration. Once power and position is good, the machine is successfully calibrated. Now let's set up the machine to splice the Armadillo 3mm splice-on connector. First, let's select our fiber type. Press the menu key, select Splice Mode. Select Single Mode Auto. Once selected, press Edit Mode button. Scroll down to Proof Test. Press the Select button to turn off. Turn on the Universal SOC Oven. Make sure the time is set to a 3mm splice-on connector, 30 seconds. Next, remove both fiber clamps from the splicer. Remove the alignment tool from the CT30 cleaver. Place the boot crimp onto the end of the boot and slide the boot onto the cable. The larger opening of the boot and crimp should face towards the end of the fiber where the splice will be made. Next, slide the brass crimp sleeve onto the cable. Using the provided strip chart, mark and remove 35 millimeters of the 3 millimeter outer jacket. Use the shrink sleeve to hold the Kevlar back as you place it on the cable. Next, mark the 900 type buffer to 5 millimeters. Strip, remove all of the acrylate coating and clean. Next, place it into the cordage holder as shown. Place into the cleaver. Make sure the 900 micron buffer is against the pad and not resting on it. Cleave the fiber. Once the fiber is cleaved, load the holder into the splicer. The cleaved fiber should rest inside the V-groove. Remove the dust cap and protection sleeve from the SOC and load it into the SOC holder. Be careful not to nick the end of the fiber. Place into the right side of the fusion splicer. Close the lid and begin the fusion splice process. After achieving a successful splice, open the clamp of the cordage holder and carefully remove the back end of the cable from the cordage holder and pull up and away from the SOC connector. This will prevent the fiber from breaking. Do not hold on to the connector. Slide the splice sleeve down while holding on to the Kevlar. Place the connector into the holder of the oven and adjust the sleeve up against the connector post. Close the lid and press the start button. Once the speed of the blinking light increases, the cooling process has begun. Once the light stops blinking, the heating process is complete. 
Allow the sleeve to cool down for two to three minutes. Once cool, pull up the crimp sleeve and capture the Kevlar over the connector post as shown. Follow the crimp diagram on the back of the strip chart according to the style connector. Crimp both connector and cable end of the brass crimp sleeve. Remove any excess Kevlar. Slide the boot all the way toward the end of the connector until the crimp sleeve is no longer exposed. Crimp the back end of the boot. Apply the outer housing. You have successfully spliced the FIS 3mm Armadillo Splice On Connector. Thanks for watching this video. There are more free training videos. Go to the playlist by clicking the top right.